All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning and happy Monday to you. You're listening to the Daily Morning Update from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is the 22nd of July. Starting with the big news from back home. The Reserve Bank of India is seeing signs of fragility in some of the 50 non-banking finance companies that it is monitoring in order to prevent the spread of a crisis that followed the collapse of the ILNFS group last year. In an interview with Bloomberg, Governor Shakti Kanta Das said that it is the RBI's endeavour that there is no contagion. Das said that the central bank is constantly in touch with the large lenders, with the NBFCs, including housing finance companies, where it sees some signs of fragility. The Bloomberg report also quotes him as saying, Not a day has passed over the last several months where internally we have not had a review or some discussion on the NBFCs, either on the sector or on the individual NBFCs. Unquote. Speaking about that ILNFS case, The Securities and Exchange Board of India has expanded its investigation into the role of five credit rating agencies after a forensic audit mandated by the new board of the group flagged serious lapses and their possible complicity with the former top brass in maintaining top ratings despite weak financials. Reliance Industries' results came after market hours on Friday and they were a mixed bag. Darshan will tell you more about that and, of course, Interglobe Aviation's results. But apart from its results, the board meeting of Interglobe Aviation was being closely watched amid the public dispute between co-founders Rakesh Gangwal and Rahul Bhatia. The company said it would seek shareholder approval to induct a woman independent director responding to one of the complaints raised by Gangwal in a board meeting that stretched to Saturday. Sticking with news in the aviation space, SpiceJet's air traffic grew at its fastest pace in more than three years in June as it added capacity. The number of passengers that flew SpiceJet during the month jumped nearly 37%. And in the Jet Airways case, the insolvency administrator of the airline is seeking resolution proposals for the grounded airline in a move that may give hope to creditors, including State Bank of India. Any expression of interest has to be submitted by the 3rd of August, according to the resolution professional, and he said this in a notice that was published in the Economic Times on Saturday. The final list of prospective applicants will be issued on the 14th of August and the resolution plans will have to be submitted by the 5th of September. In a telling move for the sector, the Vodafone Idea Telecom Combine has decided to wind up the operations of Aditya Birla Payments Bank 17 months after the venture was launched. The decision was taken due to unanticipated developments in the business landscape that have made the economic model unviable, according to an exchange filing. In politics, the Karnataka Assembly was adjourned on Friday till today, yet another delay for the trust vote of the Congress JDS government. Governor Vajubai Valla had set a deadline of 1.30pm on Friday for Chief Minister H.D. Kumaraswamy to prove his majority. That will now likely happen today. Foreign institutional investors net sold over 950 crore worth of equity on Friday, a day when the benchmark Nifty lost 177 points or over 1.5%. In international news, the UK sought to lower tensions after Iran seized a British oil tanker in the Strait of Hormuz on Friday. It demanded the immediate release of the Stena Impero and on Saturday summoned Iran's diplomat in London. While the government threatened Iran with serious consequences and advised UK ships to avoid the area, ministers on Sunday sought to dial down the rhetoric. In international markets, Asian equities have opened mixed after the lower close by U.S. equities on Friday. With that, it's over to Darshan Mehta for the trade setup for the day in India. Morning, Darshan. How are we looking today? Hi, Alex. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Global queues are weak at this point of time, and the SGX Nifty is also indicating one. But in the midst of earnings season, Kotak Mahindra Bank will be the Nifty company that will report numbers today. Among the other results, there is Canfin Homes, Just Dial, TVS Motors, Glaxo Pharma, 
ICICI Securities, Mastec, OBC and United Spirits. In terms of the fourth quarter numbers that are yet to be announced, Devan Housing will be reporting them today. In terms of results already announced, mixed use from Reliance Industries at the Nest Profit was aided by higher other income. Lower refining and petrochemical profitability dragged the profitability of the company. GRMs were down 1.2% to 8.1 per barrel, which is the lowest since the third quarter. But the company maintained an upbeat outlook on expansion in refining margins. Geo mixed set of quarters as the subscriber edition pace slowed down. ARPU dropped to 122 rupees from 126 rupees in the last quarter. And Brookfield will acquire 49% stake in the Tower Infrastructure Trust for 25,000 crores. HDFC Bank, it was a muted performance with weakening asset quality. Softening credit growth was led by moderating auto loans and rundown of a few corporate assets. The bank anticipates some elevated pressure in the agri portfolio. Interglobe Aviation reports strong numbers beats the estimate. It was the highest ever revenue, EBITDA and net profit and the biggest YOY jump in revenue and yield since listing. But the management does not expect anything meaningful positive impact of Jet to continue in the second quarter. NNT Finance Holding, Pat was in line, NII was below expectation. The company has said that they will defocus structure finance and DCM and narrow focus to rural housing and infra. LNT Tech has revised down the FI20 revenue guidance to 12 to 14 percent from 14 to 16 percent. Mahindra CI reported weak set of numbers. They were below estimates. ICICI Lombard results were in line with estimates. Avanti Feeds revenues were up 5 percent, profit up 13 percent, and EBITDA up 3 percent. So, decent set of numbers. Amara Raja Batteries results were above estimates and were held by softer lead prices and stronger replacement markets. Other stocks, uh, IOL Chemicals has made a payment of 15 crores to banks and totally prepaid 84 crores to reduce debt on the company. Strides Pharma has announced a successful completion of the US FDA inspection at their Bangalore plant, while City says that the company's Bangalore unit received seven observations from the US FDA. NHB has asked the housing finance companies to desist from financial subvention schemes and the circular applies prospectively. The action follows several complaints from customers and even alleged fraud by developers. Morgan Stanley says that the additional business headwind for stressed or weaker developers. And in terms of bulk deals, California Public Employment Retirement System acquired 41 lakh shares in Devan Housing but sold 33 lakh shares in Reliance Infra. But there's much more you need to know before trade actually starts. For that, log on to our website, BloombergQuinn.com and click on the All You Need to Know tab and you will be prepared for morning trade. Thanks, Darshan. And as always, thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a lovely day and an even better week ahead. I hope you enjoy listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladiti Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy. <laughs>